So in this video, what we're going to do is set up an animator controller for our player. This will also be an animator controller that we use for our AI in later videos. This animator controller is going to switch between an idle animation and a run animation, depending on the speed of our nav mesh agent. So let's go ahead and get started. So if we click on our player, we can see that our player has an animator component on it. The controller option is empty. We don't have an animator controller, and that's what we're going to be creating first. You can see, however, we do have an avatar, and that came with the asset from the asset store. So in my animations folder, if you don't have one, you can create one. I'm going to right click, create, and I'm going to create an animation controller. And I'm going to call this soldier. This is going to work for both our player and our AI. Now to edit that, I'm going to go into window, animation, and animator. It's going to bring up this window here. Now again, this tutorial is not intended to tell you how to use the animator or be a complete tutorial on how to use the animator, but we're gonna cover some of the basics. So what we have here is the entry. This is what's gonna happen when the animator gets started. And so in our case, that's where we're gonna go. We're gonna go into what's called a blend tree. So I'm gonna right click and create a state and from a new blend tree. Well, what a blend tree does, it allows the computer to blend between two or more animations depending on a parameter. And so what we're gonna do is blend between an idle animation and a run animation. And we're gonna use the idle animation and the run animation that came with our characters from the asset store. But before we do that, we're gonna create a new parameter. So I'm gonna click up here on parameters and it's already got one by default when we added the blend tree. So I'm just gonna rename it speed. So we're gonna to look at the player's speed and that's gonna help us blend between the idle and the run animation. So I'm gonna double click on the blend tree. And you'll notice here up at the top left of my animator window, we have some breadcrumbs to get us back to our base layer. Double click again and go back. So make sure that you've clicked on the blend tree node. And then over here at the motion, we wanna add two motion fields. So these motion slots here is where we're gonna add our animations. So I'm gonna click the little dot here. And I'm gonna search for idle. And this M underscore weapon underscore idle underscore A is the animation from our asset pack. I'm gonna use that. And then I'm gonna search for run. And again, M underscore weapon underscore run. That's the animation that came from our animation pack. And then we have to give it a threshold of how is it gonna switch back and forth? How is it, what's the threshold for the speed when it's gonna go from idle to run? Now, it might seem like you'd wanna set this really low because you only wanna idle when you're not moving. But remember, this is going to blend between the two. So when we're moving at slow speed, we still maybe want some of our idle animation, but we don't wanna be all the way into our run animation. So I'm gonna untoggle this animate thresholds here. That'll let me edit the thresholds. And I'm gonna choose this to be a threshold of four. And the reason I'm choosing four, if we go back to our player in our hierarchy, on our nav mesh agent, I've chosen the top speed to be 12. So as the player approaches the speed of four, we're gonna to start to blend more and more of the run animation into the current animation of the player. And we're really lucky Unity does all this blending for us. And that's all we need to do for the animator. It's created, it's good to go. But we do still need to assign it to our player. So if we click on our player in the hierarchy, and then we're gonna drag and drop that animation controller, which I called soldier, into our controller slot, like so. Now if I push play, we can see what happens to our character. You can notice now that my player, it's a little subtle, but my player is running an idle animation. The arms aren't straight out, they're not in T-pose anymore, but we're moving around and we're not going into our run animation. And that's because that parameter, that speed parameter is still zero. So what we need to do is create a flow graph that updates that parameter with the speed of our nav agent. And we'll do that next. So make sure you've selected your player. I'm gonna minimize my nav mesh agent and I'm gonna add another flow machine. We're gonna have another flow machine on this character. We're gonna have another flow graph that's running some code. I don't wanna mix this in with my player movement. You could, but it'd be really easy to make it buggy or make it not work quite right. So I'm gonna go back to my macros folder and I'm gonna right click, create, bolt, flow macro. And I'm gonna name it animator updater. And this is gonna be the same flow graph that we use on our AI. So we're gonna use the same animator controller and we're gonna use the same flow graph to keep that animator updated. So I'm gonna go into the flow graph and I want this to be updated every frame. So we're gonna use an update event and I'm gonna right click over here to add a unit and I'm gonna get animator set float. So what this is gonna let us do is we're gonna be able to update that parameter on our animator. The first field here is the animator itself. Since this flow graph is on the same object as the animator, we can just leave it as self. The name is the name of the parameter. So I'm gonna type in speed. And then this value, that's the value of the speed. That's the value we need to update. And we can get that directly from our nav mesh agent. So I'm gonna right click over here. 
I'm gonna search for nav agent, and I'm gonna look for velocity. You can, if you look for speed, you can get something that looks like nav mesh agent speed. However, if you read the description, that's the maximum speed that this nav agent can move. So that's gonna be 12, that's not what we want. We're gonna get the velocity, and that is the current velocity of the object. But velocity, if you ever took physics, is a vector. It's got a direction to it, and that's not what we want. We want the magnitude of the velocity. So I'm gonna drag out from there, and I'm gonna search for vector three magnitude. Then this value here is what's gonna get drug into the animator set float, and then I'm gonna connect up my flow, like so. And we'll shrink it up, tidy it up a little bit. So there you go. That's all we need to do to update our animator so that we go switch from our idle to our run animation. Let's go back to our player and drag that animator updater into that flow machine. Let's push play and see if it works. Now you can see as we move around, our player switches into the run animation. As it comes to a stop, it goes back into the idle animation. Now you might wanna play around with the threshold, you might wanna play around with the speed of the run animation, all depending on the settings that you have in your game. So there you go, we've created an animator controller and we've created a flow graph that keeps our animator controller updated based on the speed of our character. In our next video, we'll start to create our AI. Our AI is gonna be based off of a similar low poly character, like the one that our player is based off of. Our AI is gonna be a little more complicated. We're gonna have a couple different states. We're gonna have a state where the AI can wander around. We're gonna have a state where the AI might chase our player. So we're gonna create a state macro, but inside that, in our next video, we're gonna primarily focus on getting the random wander behavior to work. So I hope that was helpful, and I hope you'll join me for my next video.